And hello everybody, welcome back to the live stream guys. We have got um, an earlier one usually, as stated, we usually go live around um, 12 o'clock or midday. Um, however, due to the news that broke late last night, I was actually in my bed and uh, for a change I actually had an early night. Um, and then we get that bombshell that of course uh, was dropped yesterday. So um, in today's live stream, in today's live show, we have got quite a lot to discuss. Of course, we will go over uh, the situation with regards to Xabi Alonso, we'll go through all the news with regards to Ruben Amramim, um, whilst also going through obviously uh, the fixtures that are coming up this weekend, or the game that's coming up this weekend, uh, whilst also discussing a load of other stuff within the Liverpool space. I don't expect many people to probably be tuning in on a live stream today, guys, just due to uh, what time it is in the UK, um, but if you are in, do um, drop a comment down in the live chat, uh, but get involved and we'll try and have a conversation about it. But for those of you watching on a replay, do let me know down there in the comment section right now, um, who do you want as the next Liverpool manager? Is Ruben Amramim your first choice or would you prefer someone a bit different? As stated, let me know down there in the comment section below. But guys, get involved in the live chat. I know it's a very, very early one. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and let's discuss all things Liverpool as we always do. So as stated, this is our third live show, so hopefully I'm getting a little bit better with the transitions. Um, oh, <laughs> me with my top off. Hold up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was a little test. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, that was me testing, obviously, the mic and stuff. It just keeps freezing on that for some weird reason. I'm not too sure why. Uh, but let's get straight into the news, of course, for today. And that was obviously the bombshell that was dropped yesterday with regards to Xabi Alonso. Now, for since um, the, the dawn of time, by the looks of things, since Jurgen Klopp made that announcement at the start or at the start of the year, um, you know the the main man has been dubbed to take over has been Xabi Alonso. Fans have got carried away with it. I've got carried away with it, um, and yeah, it just it seemed destined that Xabi Alonso would be the next Liverpool manager uh, following Jurgen Klopp just after a successful season at Bayer Leverkusen, and probably to Bayer Leverkusen uh, in a way that people probably didn't take Bayer Leverkusen serious and that they weren't an option overall. But as stated, the news dropped last night that Liverpool would no longer be waiting for Xabi Alonso. He's no longer on the club's shortlist. And it does seem as though Xabi Alonso will, of course, be staying at Bayer Leverkusen um, for next season. He will have a release clause active in 2025. Um, but yeah, not sh well, yeah, kind of shock news, really, because we didn't feel that we would get an idea on who our manager was going to be this early on. We thought it was probably going to take a little while longer. We probably thought... Um, Stuff won't happen until sort of April time. But as stated, Paul Joyce, Fabrizio Romano, David Ornstein um, have got wind that, of course, Xabi Alonso does not want to come to the football club this summer. And Fabrizio Romano did follow up stating that, of course, he will likely um, stay at Bayer Leverkusen. Florian Plettenberg, again... He did actually say it, as much as people don't want to try and um, to say it, and I, I, I've been rubbishing him as a journalist, not because of his, 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 his contacts and his knowledge. I do think he's a very reputable journalist when it does come to German football, but he was peddling that narrative ever so slightly. He said, it, look, it was not going to be Liverpool, but he's kind of swanning in there saying that Bayern's a realistic option for him, but Fabrizio Romano, David Ornstein and co. have came out and stated that, no, that's not the case, and he actually wants to stay at Bayer Leverkusen. The race with Bayern Munich and Bayern Munich haven't given up hope just yet either. They're waiting around another month apparently before going on and, and looking for other options. But as stated, with regards to Xavi Alonso's actual um, future and his sort of career, it does seem as though he is going to be staying at Bayer Leverkusen. Um, guys, if you are just joining in, please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. As stated, let's try and get this to... 300 likes, that's a, uh, a goal, 300 likes. So if you haven't already hit the like button, do do so. And if you are new, then do also subscribe. So discussing, of course, the big man Alonso. Um, and yeah, that's um, 
that's us there with him. Oh, sorry, actually, I need to probably add another little scene um, just because um, I forgot to add the Ruben one. But we are going to speak about the big man now, of course, in the title, Ruben Amramim. Now, Ruben Amramim is a interesting one, guys, because funnily enough, if you do follow our sister channel, that, of course, being... Um, Penenka LFC, you would have seen I dropped a big deep dive into Ruben Amramim um, a couple of, literally two days ago. Um, and then following the news, it has emerged that he is now the favourite to take over as the Liverpool manager. Now, Ruben Amramim is um, a very, very interesting option. Now, again, I don't want to bore you too much with the actual deep dive as such, but following the news of Alonso, he has become the um, the first option or now at the top of the shortlist and does become the favourite to become the next Liverpool manager. Now, already in the sort of hours following this sort of a news and this announcement, um, I've seen a bit of a split within the fan base uh, that, you know, Liverpool fans have kind of some say yes, it would be a good appointment. Some have said no, it wouldn't be a good appointment. So uh, where do I stand with it? Well, I do think he's probably the best option out there, honestly. I do. People would say about Nagelsmann, um, which I do see as well. But with regards to Ruben Amramim, I do think actually he does possess a lot of qualities that Jurgen Klopp actually has as well. Now, people will say that he's a pragmatic defensive coach, which actually is not very true. It's not true at all. Yes, um, his teams are fairly disciplined. They play in that 3-4-3 formation. But um, no, they, they, they play a lot with that sort of Gagan press. They play a lot. There's a lot of similarities there between Jurgen Klopp and Ruben Amarim's um, sort of sides and as I said he likes to build up from the back um, and yes his teams are very defensively um, stingy at the back they don't let in a lot of goals but going forward they're very entertaining and they are very attack minded so I do think Ruben would actually be a good fit um, and would be a good option to be fair um, but yeah um, but yeah, so that was that was for Ruben Amarim. But I do want to know your thoughts, guys. Let me know in the live chat. As I said, this is an interactive show. If you can let me know your thoughts in the live chat on Ruben Amarim, what do you think of him? Of course, now following the Alonso news, he has emerged as the um, the first choice to be the next um, Liverpool manager. So do let me know your thoughts down there in the old live chat and let's have a little conversation on him. I've got another deep dive video coming out later on this channel with regards to him. Um, just finishing editing it now. So it should be out around two o'clock today. Um, so if you are watching on a replay, it might already be out. So do check it out. It will be a, uh, a good one. It will go into the tactics and why he could be good. He's also a very good man manager as well in terms of what Jurgen Klopp's uh, qualities possess. He's very good with people. He's very good at managing players, individuals, and these kind of things. And Ruben Amramim is the sort of same person. You know, he won over the press. He won over the players. He's, he's, he's well dubbed as a, a very, very good man manager, which could be good going into a sort of transitional phase. He's also great at nurturing talent. Now, this is why I can see as a, a sort of not a like for like. Yes, there's similarities there with Jurgen Klopp, but why I could see he could be the attractive um person for it is because well over the years he's given those chances to younger players and allowed them to come into the team and and um he has been um given opportunity for them he, he he's a good blend between you know bedding in younger players and also using seasoned um pros and and, and coming up with a concoction and creating a good system that has obviously been successful if you don't know too much about him he obviously started down in the third division uh, before getting the Braga B job um, following that he was at Braga first team manager following the second and actually only managed them for 11 Premier League games uh, one ten of them lost one Sorry, won 10 of them, drew one, and his only defeats as Braga manager actually came against Glasgow Rangers in the Europa League. Following this, Sporting Lisbon then went gun ham for him. They paid 10 million euros to acquire him as their next manager. Now, this was the third highest fee that's ever been paid for a manager. Um, Sporting Lisbon moved, jumped the gun, and appointed him as their manager. 10 million euros they paid for him. Now, following that, of course, Sporting 
Sporting Lisbon, his first season or his first full season in charge of Sporting Lisbon, he won the league title for the first time in two decades, stopping the duopoly of Benfica and FC Porto, which is a massive achievement, really it is. It's not like he won the Portuguese Premier League with FC Porto or, uh, or Benfica, who always win it. He stopped a duopoly that has been going on for two decades. Sporting went two decades without a title and he managed to, of course, um, stop that and um, win them their first title. The second season, he finished as a runners-up and then won a domestic cup trophy, a domestic cup. That was his second domestic cup because um, he won, a, a, I think, a double, a league double, a league and cup double the first season. Last season wasn't that great. I think he finished fourth in the, ta fourth in the league and went a season without silverware. However, um, this season he has definitely bounced back and Sporting Lisbon do currently sit top of the Premier League, a point ahead of Benfica and have played or do have a game in hand over second place Benfica. They're also seven points clear of um, FC Porto as well, who are sitting in third. So again, a very, very impressive CV. If you're actually comparing him and Xabi Alonso, Ruben Amarim has done more in the game as a manager. Some people will just point to the fact, well, He's playing in the Portuguese League or the Portuguese Premier League, which is sometimes a little bit disrespectful because I do think it's a decent division. Some people might look at Ten Hag and what's going on uh, with him uh, currently. He had done well at Ajax. But Ajax, winning the Eredivisies with Ajax and winning the league titles with, with Sporting Lisbon is different. Sporting Lisbon are the third best team within Portugal. They're not the the out-and-out -out giant within that division. So, um, again, he's had to, to be, he has had to work well. And, again, that adaptive as well. He's lost a lot of his good players. He's lost some big, big names over the years whilst being the Sporting Lisbon manager and has always came back and gone again and gone again, um, utilising and promoting youth or bringing Barry Shrewd in the, in, in the transfer market as well. So I do think he's a fantastic manager. I do think he's quite good. And if you do look into his sort of tactics and maybe look beyond when people are going, oh, he's defensive, he's a pragmatic, he's like an Antonio Conte regen. He's not. He's not. The only thing that they have similarities is is he's a 3-4-3 three, three formation and he plays that. But no, he's very, very good um, tactically. And he's not his way or the highway. He's very adaptable when it comes to his tactics as well. He will change it. He will, um, he likes to build up from the back, as a lot of managers do these days, integrate the goalkeeper and play that way. But also, if it's not working and he can't get past it, he can't do it, he's not afraid to play long balls. And it's worked very, very well with Giarikis, who's obviously scored, I think, 50-odd goals so far this season. Um, so he, he can play long balls ball galore as well. He, he's very, very adaptable and changes um, everything regards to, to how it's going in a game. He's not too stubborn. And um, I think he could be a very, very good option for us, honestly. If you're looking at like proper world-class managers at this moment in time that are currently on the market or top-class managers that are currently out on the market at this moment in time, there's not a lot. There really isn't a lot of managers, guys. If you look at it, some people say Zinedine Zidane. I can't get behind Zinedine Zidane because I've not really seen the guy without that sort of star-studded Real Madrid team, which was fantastic. I would like to maybe see him having another job, but that's a risk that someone could probably take. Um, obviously, Nagelsmann is one as well, which, again... He's been successful at buying. He was successful at buying, but it doesn't take a lot to be successful at buying. I just think for an actual perfect fit, I did think it was going to be Xabi Alonso. I thought he would be the best one. But I do think the second best option is, in my opinion, Ruben Amarim. And I think within the Liverpool board, they do share that same sort of thought process. I do think that is the best option for us as a football club. Um, and as stated, Paul Joyce, David Ornstein have also said that he's currently at the top of the shortlist. So if I was a betting man, I would say Ruben Amarim will be our next manager. However, I said that when about Xavi Alonso literally 48 hours ago. So don't listen to me necessarily. I don't know much. I'm a fan like you guys. I didn't. I don't claim that I'm in the know. Um, I just bring uh, and, and have conversations with you. Um, but yeah, at this moment in time, it does look like Ruben Amarim will be, or at least is the favourite candidate or preferred candidate to take over Jurgen Klopp, which... Um, 
will be interesting. Will be very, very interesting. Anyway, but guys, as always, do let me know in the live chat. I'm going to read some comments in a second um, and uh, take some comments. But as stated, if you're watching this live or on a replay, let me know your thoughts on Ruben Amramim. Get involved in the live chat, guys. We're trying to build a bit of a community um, here, and I'm, I'm looking to, to see some regular faces on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, DMBT10, I know, mate. I'm going to try and sort it out, of course. I'm very, very sorry with, with my quality sometimes. I'm really going to sort it out. We're looking to, to do a bit more about that. Um, I don't know Ruben's nationality. Is he European? I'm sure he's Portuguese, is he not? <laughs> um, Gerald says, I think Klopp will extend his contract. Wait and see. I don't think that's going to be the case, mate. Um, Alan Pugh says, I think this is the best of the rest. Again, I do think so. Um, Al Roy says, I trust LFC to get a good coach. Um, and then Adam Reynolds says, does Ruben Amramim have a release clause? Yes, he has a release clause. So this is another thing that I want to say about Ruben um, as well, is he does have a release clause. The price of that, I'll reveal. I can't, I can't remember the actual price. Let me just try and find it a second. Um, do, 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 do. Two seconds. Uh, I'm trying to find it. I did see it. I'm looking on somewhere because I did see the fee. I think it might be around 10 million euros. Uh, sorry. No, 17 million pounds. So that comes from Paul Joyce, guys. So yes, Ruben Amramin does have a release clause. He will cost 17 million pounds, which is crazy for a uh was which is crazy for a for a fee for a manager really but i think Xami alonso had current they were around the same i think we had to pay a big compensation package regardless but a lot of these young up-and-coming coaches are the same they got they've got these release clauses and that's what it's going to be yeah sorry adam i got there just before you mate but uh thank you for for letting me know yeah 17 million quid is uh is what it is so yeah, he is the strong front runner, guys. Uh, Roberto De Zerbi is another person as well that is, of course, being linked. But the standout candidate at this moment in time is Ruben. And all we've got on that one, guys, is, of course, that he will um, be at least interviewed for the job come the end of the campaign. And it does look very, very likely that he will be our new manager. But there could be loads and twists and turns, guys. We did say the same, or everyone's been saying the same about Alonso. So... Um, don't take it for gospel just yet. We'll see. We'll have to wait. Um, and there's, I'm sure there'll be loads more twists and turns uh, before the season ends either way. So, yeah. Um, right. Let's go on to some other news, guys. And, and whilst, yes, um, the reason, another reason why I went through, uh, we've done a live show early today is because the press conference is around midday or around two o'clock. Um, so, Maybe we can do another show later and, and go through how the players have come through or or whatever. Um, see who's who's fit and available. But I do have a little bit of news with regards to our players. Um, so yeah, let's start with Robbo. Um, so yes, Andy Robertson, of course. Whilst we'll get the gospel from um, the big man Jurgen Klopp today, um, it does seem as though that. Um, He's okay. The independence Richard Jolly has suggested that he should return against Sheffield United. He said the left back underwent scans after being forced off to go off on Tuesday, and they confirmed that he suffered no major damage. So that's very, very good with regards to Andy Robertson. Um, but he is set to miss Sunday's home match against Brighton, but could return for Thursday's meeting with Sheffield United, um, and should go uh, should be fit for the trip against Manchester United on the seventh of April. Other sources of also backed that up and stated that um, his absence is more mere a rather a few days rather than a few weeks so that's very very good so he's not going to be out for a long time he's looking likely that he'll probably just miss the game against um, miss the game of course against Brighton this weekend but following that should be back again as well so that's very very good to hear on that regard with him him. Now, in other sort of team news, and at the time of doing this live stream, doing the live show, guys, Jurgen Klopp hasn't been uh, spoken to the press yet. So this is all prior to the to the uh, to the to um, the press conference. But what we already know from yesterday's training um, is that Curtis Jones and Ibrahima Kanate were absent as the Liverpool squad reassembled at the training centre on Thursday, three days, of course, before the visit. Um, 
Obviously, Andy Robertson was was not there as all as, as as you know. Uh, but as stated, Curtis Jones, the midfielder, has missed the last eight matches with an ankle ligament damage and was expected to mark his return against the Seagulls. But that will now be in doubt due to him not being there for training. Now, the confusing one though, guys, is Ibrahim Kanate because he was not pictured on the training field after making his injury return with France. Remember, he did play the full ninety minutes against Chile in France's second match, but was not um, seen in training um, for the Reds yesterday, which I do believe is is, is not good news. It's not good sign, um, unfortunately. So hopefully um, nothing serious there because I do miss Canate. Canate and Van Dijk is our best centre-back partnership. Uh, but as stated, um, whilst it does not look good, we'll get further update. We'll get the word from Jurgen Klopp later on in the day. Um, Costa Simakas was also missing though but he is likely on an extended recovery after playing 120 minutes in Greece's defeat in the Euro playoff on Tuesday night so Simakas doesn't look like he's actually out injured it just seems as though he was away uh, an extra day off um, due to having to play 120 minutes the other night there um, Darwin Nunes though who pulled out of Uruguay's squad with a hamstring complaint was involved in the session um, just as we've seen on Wednesday when a small group assembled for training so um, positive news really with regards to the team being back um, there was still no sign of Trent Alexander-Arnold or Diogo Jota or Diogo Jota though um, but a return over the next sort of two weeks was sort of you know, projected for Trent Alexander-Arnold and Jota. And remember as well with Alisson Becker, he's in that same sort of camp that, well, look, he's not going to be back for um, another two or three weeks either. So that was well expected. Um, but Darwin Nunes looks like he's OK. Uh, the problems or doubts now, though, are Kanate and Curtis Jones. Um, and of course, Andy Robertson looks like he's going to be missing the game on Sunday as well. So... That's that in terms of those one, in terms of that kind of news. Um, but we've got a bit more with regards to FSG buying a football club. Now, this one has been speaking, we've been speaking about this quite a lot. There's different um, news coming out all of the time with regards to Liverpool's owners potentially buying. Since, since Michael Edwards' news came out and stated that they wanted to try and buy a um, new club, FSG wanted to buy a new club. You know, the press, as they always do, have ran away with it and, and, and linked us to different clubs. There was obviously one, that, of course, with FSG's American links that, well, they could go for an MLS franchise, um, whilst that seems more of like a long-distance sort of project. Then, of course, last week, reports came out that we could buy Toulouse just due to Redbird Capital being partners, but that's then since been rubbished. Um, however, now it is being stated, now this is quite exciting, this one's quite exciting because it states that Fenway Sports Group will expand their portfolio with the purchase of another football club, and it could be from South America. Yes, um, interestingly, whilst... Uh, they did the reports did get rubbished about the uh, Toulouse one. Um, they've went on to explain that FSG are previously holding interest in a Brazilian club by the name of Cruzeiro. Now, buying a club in South America is described as a viable option, though opting investment into another European club is more likely. Now, were the multi sort of club situation it's more than just one it could be more than just a two club thing obviously we could be looking at three four clubs over the over the line but the south american one guys would be uh an interesting one because everyone keeps on talking about you know going straight to the source trying to avoid these transfer fees being like a bit of a benfica being shrewd with your business like real madrid have kind of done they've, they've kind of cut out the middleman they've been sick of paying these 100 150 million pound transfer fees and whilst they bought endrick for 56 i mean that's pretty much a still considering what his potential is they've been going straight to the tap um and getting it to them they've gathered them the players themselves so if we had a network set up in south america and been able to to monitor all of those all of the talent in that continent and have a club there and allowed us to, to produce it, it could be a very, very good option for us going forward. Then, of course, you would want a European team as well, lesser than Liverpool to to maybe allow our academy players to go out on loan, to maybe see a jump in quality, whether that be a French team or, or that kind of level. Um, and then, of course, you would like to see an American one. But obviously, this is all going to take time. We are going to be getting another club. I say we, Liverpool not as such, but FSG will be getting another club. 
Um, and it does seem as though South America is definitely on the cards. That comes uh, off the latest reports to, or yesterday, should I say. So um, that's uh, pretty much all of the latest Liverpool news from the last 24 hours. A bit of team news. Of course, the big bombshell with regards to Xavi Alonso, our new managerial candidate being Ruben Amramon. Amaramim, sorry, um, and as stated, we'll probably get a bit more news later on today with regards to our players, when players are going to be coming back, and who's going to be fit and, ava fit and available for this game against Brighton. So, um, yeah, a bit of a Liverpool fix for you this early morning. Uh, we will have another deep dive later with regards to our um, Ruben. I'm, I'm literally finishing off editing the video right now um, so that should be up at some point later and if anything more comes out anything more breaking comes out we'll do another sort of live video or maybe just do a short uh, roundup video but um, let's take some comments though before we before we maybe wrap up um, Jen LSC says no one can replace Klopp um, Sacred said that's going to be a big problem when next season starts so someone had better I think Amaramim could bring in um, in Asio or Diamande if he comes which could be good cause me because we need centre back now you're right. Yes, you can make a good point there. I did say well, there's been a lot of reports, I think, from Paul Joyce earlier in the summer or um, earlier in the season. He stated that Liverpool have kind of revamped their midfield now and they've, they've, they've done that midfield rebuild. It's been very, very successful. As as you can see, we've seen Henderson go, we've seen all these other players go. We've brought in Dominic Sabarzai, McAllister, Endo, um, Gravenberg, and it's been a very, very successful rebuild in terms of the middle of the park for us. Uh, Paul Joyce said at the start, um, at the start of the season, though, that our interest or our main section this season or this summer is going to be the defence, trying to to revamp that and put a bit more life, inject a bit more life into our defence. Um, so yeah, as you can see there. Amaramin will is very unique. He plays three at the back, so he will have a way of setting up his defenders and how his defenders are played. Now, the thing is with Ozamande uh, Diamande, and sorry for pronunciation, I never get it right. In Casio, I think his name is, or in Accio, um, those two are fantastic in, in terms of playing his system. And those two, actually, when it comes to European centre backs or European defenders, they're right at the top of the list. A lot of clubs are really interested in both of them. You know, you're talking Real Madrid's, Barcelona's, all looking and monitoring those two players and they've been fantastic again this year they can boast I think I think they boast the third best uh, defensive record within the Premier League so far this season which you're probably going well that's probably where they should be um, but going forward as well they're so key to contributing to Sporting Lisbon's attacking intent um, and they do play a lot from the back so they're very very good the thing with Diamanda he's very good at receiving the ball for, um, for with his back to play which is a strength that an Amramim defender needs to have his age as well does fit our recruitment plan as well. So could potentially be, of course, um, a signing that we could go for this summer, especially with the fact that we are going to be spending money on our defence and the fact that with a new manager to fit a system, yes, they're one of those two players could definitely be a Liverpool player come the uh, come the come the summer. Who sees? Um, do you know if Amarim speaks English? Having someone speak in, in Spanish and Portuguese would definitely help out at our club. But English would be a must. I would have thought. Um, unknown. I don't know. I really don't know, unfortunately. Um, I'm not too sure if he does speak English. Um, I, I've, I've known a lot about his tactics. I've done a bit of research in his style of play and all these kind of things. But when it comes to speaking English, maybe that's probably one of the, the first things that I've not been able to uh, not been able to check. But when it comes to like Zinedine Zidane, when he's kind of linked everybody just goes straight away oh he doesn't speak english so that's he's always almost rubbish for an english premier league job so i do think that he could be okay personally i do think he could actually be okay with regards to that and i think he might speak english now i think portuguese i mean he spent his whole career in portugal it's an interesting one i think he would speak english but i don't know i don't know for 100 percent sure i'm maybe 80 percent sure he can do um Hasvam says, yes, he does. Uh, did you say Klopp was having a press conference at 2? I think it's 1.30 British Standard Time, guys. Uh, Julian Nagelsmann is delaying signing extension to his contract with Germany, leaving his option open maybe for Liverpool. Again, it could be a potential. Could be a potential. But as stated, it does seem that Ruben Amarim is our preferred candidate at this moment in time. But as you've already seen in this managerial pursuit, in this managerial hunt, things chop and change. Things just move around. So we'll, we'll wait and find out, certainly. 
Um, but Liverpool fans, um, that's it. That's all I'm going to really do today. I've taken a lot of your time. Um, so do hit the old like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, and as most importantly, guys, get, get involved in the comment section below. That's uh, spark a bit of a debate, spark a bit of a conversation. Um, what do you think with regards to Ruben Amaramim? Um, and are you enjoying these live shows? Uh, shall I continue to do them? Um, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, guys. And... I will see you later. I've definitely got a video coming out later. It's, I'm editing it now. It's a good one. It's on Ruben Amarim, so make sure you watch it. Um, and I might do a live show later unless anything is breaking with regards to what Jurgen Klopp says and we can discuss it all together and see what's what. But um, thankfully, Liverpool are back. Thank goodness me. Thank goodness me. So, yeah, last time I can actually wear this for a little while. I'm so glad Jürgen is a red. Um, if you haven't checked out Copite Clothing yet, just go there. Check it out. We've got some decent designs. Um, but, yeah, guys.